<laughs> Congratulations. You pretty good. You loved it. <sighs> You're not going to believe this. Oh, yes. Ilya thinks you're ready for the pro tour. Uh, not yet, but he has told me he's going to take me under his wing and give me weekly lessons whenever he's in town. That kid's going to be born with a tennis elbow if you're not careful. That's a wives' tale. Besides, mm -hmm. I talked to the doctor. Plenty of exercise through the eighth month. You see, your star's temper's exploded one too many times. I, I think he needs a rest. Maybe you should visit his homeland. His temper sells tickets. That's what pros are all about. Well, the uh, vote was unanimous. When did the Rules Committee reach this vote? This morning. Well, I don't understand it. Your father invites him here, and at the same time, gets him suspended. My father didn't acquire this thousand-acre paradise by being predictable. Besides, he's only one member of the committee. He doesn't own it. He owns it, all right. Look, Ilya Ostrov is my livelihood. If he doesn't play, I don't eat. Well, maybe you should uh, look around for another pro, someone who... Uh knows the rules of the game. I have been hacking away at pro tennis for 15 years, and now it's finally a big money game, and I've got a big money player. So your father wants to dump me out in the street? I tell you, I don't like it. Mr. Hoffenstein, my father holds his possessions very dearly. That includes his newspaper, this thousand acre estate and everything on it. The wild game preserve, his prize cattle, but most of all, beautiful wife. I'm gonna talk to the old man myself. Well, however you handle it, don't keep your tennis player in the dark much longer, or he'll read it on the sports page. Sally. Hi. Hi. Three years is too long a time, but you're still as beautiful as ever. You guys haven't met. This is my husband, Matt. This is Ewing's son, Walter. How do you Misha, do? Your wife is one of the fabulous spirits of our time. <sighs> That's what she keeps telling me. Congratulations are in order. We're talking to the new president of the Webley Corporation. Well, thank you. Uh, I wanted to call, but you know how hectic it can be starting at the top. <laughs> Walter! Have you seen your father? I think he went to check out the lions. The lions? Yeah, it's his latest acquisition. He brought them in from Africa, but I, I think he's going to donate them to the zoo. They're frightening the workers. Had to mention at least one of the guests. Two. One. I was talking about you. Walter, dear, would you please mingle a little? I can't do it all myself. Are you two staying for dinner? You couldn't drag us away. Your father's meals are legend. I'll see you both later. Commissioner, I have to go with Mingle. Wasn't uh, Walter one of your amorous prospects in one of your previous lives? Mm, four very heavy dates. Then, darling, you came along, and you swept me off my feet. And all the other boys just sort of faded into Never Never Land. And Walter, heartbroken, poor thing, exiled himself to Southern California, where he sold insurance for Daddy's corporation. Well, he... Couldn't exactly live at home with mother. <laughs> Do you think it's true what they say about Elia and Rachel? Senor. How is the beef aging? Beautifully. Now that you have installed a new freezing unit, we no longer have to process the private stock commercially. Ronaldo, I've just been checking on the lions. They seem hungry. They are hungry. We'll have Silverio feed them. Silverio's gone for three days now. Gone? Where? Maybe he went back to Caracas. Or maybe he's just taking advantage of the long employment with you. But he has disappeared. And no one else is going to feed those panthers. <laughs> They're lions, Ronaldo. They scare the herd. I know. That's why we moved them nearer the house. They also scare the workers, senor. They're caged, aren't they? The men will just have to live with it. With Silverio gone, who's going to feed them? 
All right, Ronaldo, I'll feed them. It's going to be 37 for dinner tonight. Serve the best Argentine. Mm, you must have the top dogs out today, senor. The upper crust of the upper crust, Ronaldo. Oh. <laughs> I've got a court reserve tomorrow if you'd like to play. Well, I'd love to, uh, Sally, but I don't think I'm really in shape for singles. Have you seen the shape she's in? We're playing doubles. Besides, I think I can get you a really good partner. Well, she's just as tenacious as other commissioner. Uh, some might even say pushy. What do you say, Walter? Well, what time? 12 noon at the tennis club in town. I'll be there. Great. Who have you got in mind for a partner? You. Some of us have to work for a living. Yes, but everyone has to take time off lunch. To eat lunch. I'll bring you a peanut butter and honey sandwich from the house. You can't say no because I've already set Elia as the fourth. Besides, I think that playing with a pro might improve your game. <clears throat> you know, you are pushy. It's a dog-eat-dog -dog world, Commissioner. All right, Spot. Let's go pay our respects to the host. You've had your official notice, Mr. Hoffenstein. I don't wish to discuss the matter further. Ah, uh, Sally. Hello, Yui. Ah, Commissioner. Nice party. Thank you. You know, there was a time, Commissioner, when I thought that your lovely wife was going to be my daughter-in-law. I think Walter needs a much younger woman, Ewing. Don't we all? How goes the fight against crime, Commissioner? Oh, it has its ups and downs, Ewing. Well, you know you can depend on my media to support you. Or do I, uh, do I read a complaint in there someplace, Stuart? Well, your blood and gore headlines, you in there. They're a little tacky, you in. Uh, yeah. Well, these are tacky times, Sally. But I'll see that they're muted. At least until the uh, circulation goes down and my stockholders complain. Ewing just loves people. We do this every weekend. Uh, would you excuse me a minute? Elia, where are you going? I'll be back in a moment. Enjoying yourself, Ted? What time does the plane leave tomorrow night for Tucson? 9.30. But there's no need for you to be on it now, is there? What are you talking about? I don't think it makes any difference at all. Tomorrow's a whole new ball game. You know, it's ready, sir. I have my wife join me at the table. Yes, sir. Quickly! What is this? Some kind of police state you run here? You miserable lowlife. You are nothing but an ill bred fascist! That outburst just nails your coffin shut, my friend. What? Please escort Mr. Astroff to his car. Friend, I heard the last of me, Webley. I'll sue you for everything you own. You can't get away with this. Dinner is served. I come to this country because here there is a sense of justice. Ha! That old man is a Nazi. You play around with his wife and he's a Nazi? You're not making any sense. I never touched Rachel. Then you're even more stupid than I thought. I do not want to talk to anyone. Yes, Hoffenstein. This is Ewing Webley. Is your client with you? Uh, uh, just a moment, sir. It's Webley. He wants to talk. Hang it up on him. 
You want to play tennis for a living, or don't you? This is Ilyastrov. If you can hold on to that temper of yours, maybe we can work things out. I will try, Mr. Webley. That's the beginning. Drive over to the main house. I'll be in the library. The butler will show you in. He wants me to drive out there. Well, that's good. You'll go. He better not be playing any more games with me. Ilya, that old man has been out playing guys like you all his life. Now, you will go out there and you will tell him that your relationship, or whatever you call it, with his wife is over. You will do it as nicely as you can, and maybe, just maybe, we'll get lucky. Now, go on, get dressed. I think I'll reread Gone with the Wind. Well, that was one of the most embarrassing things I've ever seen. What, my backhand? No, you know, Ewing and Ilya. You better not make any mistakes with your instructor. He'll come after you with a racket. Don't bend your elbow on the follow-through. Thank you, Mildred. I didn't know you played tennis, Mildred. Oh, well, I had to give it up. I couldn't see over the net. Where are you going? To bed. In your coat? I just came in. Were you out? Yes, with Sarah Jukes. Oh, who is Sarah Jukes? Yeah. Sarah Jukes is in charge of the entire staff of Walter Webley's new townhouse. Oh, townhouse. I like that word. That's two words. Well, she likes both of them. Commissioner, did you know that Sarah Jukes is the highest paid housekeeper in the Bay Area? On the other hand, I give you better straight lines. Yeah, you got a point there. Say good night, Mildred. Good night, Mildred. See? Change your clothes. We only have the courts for an hour. Commissioner? What's the matter, Mac? Walter, I, I have some bad news for you, I'm afraid. Huh? It's about your father. He's dead. How? I don't know. Would you like to go out to the ranch with me? Yeah. I'd like to go too, Mac. Fine. Where's he live? I don't know, he's late. Sergeant Enright, this is Walter Webley. Mr. Webley? Sergeant. Cause of death established yet? Yes, sir. Yes? Commissioner, the cause of death was the result of being eaten by lions. I wish there was a better way to say that. 
well. How can you be sure it was my father? Well, we found a, a, a shoe, some personal belongings, and a few pieces of cloth, which the butler said were the clothes that your father wore last night. It was an accident, wasn't it, Sergeant? I'm afraid not, sir. Well, do you know who did it? No, sir. Well, Commissioner, I suppose you'll give this your own special attention? I intend to, Walter. If you'll excuse me, Walter, I... I wouldn't mention this to the press until we finish our investigation. A shoe, a piece of clothing? It's not very positive identification. No, sir. I didn't want to mention it in front of the sun. You sound like you don't want to mention it in front of anybody. Well, we found Mr. Webley's dentures, sir. His dentures? Yes, sir. The dentist has already verified them. Well, who found them? Uh, the foreman of the ranch. Do you know that Mr. Webley's teeth cost more than my mother's house? Any idea how he ended up in the lion's cage? Yes, sir, I think so. You notice the scuff marks in the sod? Well, it looks as if Mr. Webley was dragged all the way down here. Whether he was alive or dead, we don't know. Why would the killer put him in a lion's cage? So the lions could eat him, sir. Of course, if the killer was trying to make it look accidental, he didn't cover his tracks very well. That's what I meant. It may be tougher to prove murder without a body, but how would the killer know that the lion would eat him beyond recognition? Well, the person who looks after the lions was away for several days. Those lions were awfully hungry, sir. And according to the foreman, Mr. Webley himself was going to feed the lions last night. Uh, well, he did do that, didn't he? Yes, sir. Oh. Now, you can see further signs of someone being dragged along here. See the shoe marks? And there are more marks up here, sir. Have you talked to anyone in the house? Well, the butler said he was up till a little after midnight when a Mr. Astroff arrived. Astroff? Yes, sir. Mr. Webley was expecting him. The butler told you that? Yes, sir. Mr. Webley told him to wait up until Astroff arrived and then show him into the library. What have you got, Harrison? Nothing much, sir. A splotch of blood on the chair. Mm -hmm. No weapon. Someone tried to make it look like there wasn't any struggle. But the blood hasn't been here more than 12 hours. Hello, Commissioner. Oh, Rachel. Uh, Rachel, this is Sergeant Enright. How do you do? What happened last night, Rachel, after we left? I don't know. I knew Ewing was upset, so after the guests left, I went right to bed. What was he upset about? Me. Because of Ilya? I told Ewing it was nothing, but he wouldn't believe me. Ilya came back here last night, Rachel. I know. Clifford told me. Clifford? Our butler. Oh. Uh, did you hear anything unusual? An argument, perhaps? I took two sleeping pills. Yeah, what about you, Walter? Did you hear anything? No, uh, I, uh, I didn't spend the night here last night. The vases. The vases are missing. Those drab old things, Walter? Those drab old things are Ming Dynasty and worth a small fortune. Rachel's idea of a work of art is a thousand dollar bill. You would never talk to me like that in front of your father. Commissioner, I'm... I'm... I'm sure these vases were up there last night. Yes, well, uh, if you see anything else missing, Walter Wyatt, be sure and report it to Sergeant Enright. Excuse me, sir. When you have time, I'd like to go over this list of your employees with you. Certainly. But you won't find the killer on that list. Who did it, man? The lions. The lions? Who in their right mind would go into a lion cage? A lion tamer would. I said, who in their right minds? Uh, what's the number of the tennis club? 555-7942. Five, 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 seven, 749? Nine. 7942. 7942. Hello, this is Commissioner McMillan. Has Ilya Astroff come in yet? He hasn't. All right. Thank you. Didn't call, didn't show. You don't think that Elia did it? When I find him, I'll ask him.
He said he'd call me right after the meeting, but I haven't heard from him yet. You're sure it was Ewing Webley on the phone? I'm positive. I have a key. Ilya! Ilya! Well, he obviously did not sleep here last night. It's obvious he left in a hurry, too. All the toilet articles are gone. Wherever he went, he certainly didn't plan to play any tennis. You know, I've never been to a funeral service in a crypt before. Well, I think we can assume it's not the social event of the current season. Mildred, would you wear this black one? Me, never. Black's too depressing. Well, I don't want to wear anything inappropriate. I always like to put myself in the position of the deceased. In a manner of speaking, of course. I mean, if it was my funeral, I wouldn't like a lot of people standing around looking like they were going to a funeral. What would you wear? What kind of a man was Ewing Webley? Strong, decisive, very rich. Hmm, how do you like his women? Young and beautiful. Mm. Just once, I'd like to hear one of these titans of industry say that they like their women older, with lots of character. Don't hold your breath. Yeah, well, young and beautiful, huh? Here. How about this one? If I was Ewing Webley, I'd like to see you in this one. Mildred, I can't wear that one. Why not? Well, this is the dress that I always wear on special occasions when I want to seduce Mac. You need a special occasion to seduce him? Yeah, like Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays. What about the other three days of the week? He seduces me. Besides, there's four days, not three. I've got it. What about this one? Oh, yeah, I like it. Splits the difference. Tasteful but subdued. My thoughts exactly. Sally, let's get going. We'll be late to the crypt. I'll be just another minute. You're not going to wear that slinky thing to a crypt, are you? What day is it? Uh, 24th. Of the week. Uh, Wednesday. I'm going to wear this one. Right, I'll be downstairs pacing. doesn't make them capable of murder. You never can tell. And it was your friend Astroff who was taken about her. Well, he's probably scared. Oh. Hi, Mrs. What's McMillan. Up, Hi, Sergeant. Well, I came over, sir, because the foreman filed a missing persons report on one of the workers, and I thought I ought to talk to him. Mm. Well, why don't you take the car? I'll go with Charlie. All right. Any word on Ilya yet? No, ma'am. A couple of people phoned in that they saw him, but it didn't check out. Don't forget the M&N Bernays sauce. I thought that cooking school of yours taught you to make your own. Oh, they do. You try and try until you get it just right. Then you go out and find somebody that does it better than you do. M&N. M and N. Now, if you find Elia, be nice to him. I'm sure he didn't do it. See you later. She sounds positive. Well, you don't give up a good tennis pro without a struggle. Ah, Senor Martinez. Oh, Sergeant, how do you do? May I present Commissioner McMillan? Hello, Senor. Commissioner, I was going to call you to cancel the missing persons report. Oh, he showed up then? A letter arrived from Silvio this morning. 
from Caracas. Um, I don't speak Spanish. He says he was homesick for his family, and he apologizes for not quitting properly, and wants to thank the Patron for the many years of employment. He also says that he's very happy where his nieces and nephews can take good care of him. Then may I keep that? I'll uh, have missing persons remove his name from their lists. Thank you, Sergeant. Uh, Thank you, sir. Senior Martinez, uh, did you see anything, or did any of the people around here see anything unusual the night of the murder? Mm -mm. Well, do you know of anyone who might have wanted Mr. Webley dead? Mr. Webley had what my people call Pundonor, a man with courage who's not afraid to use his hands. He never forgot his common origins. No, he had no enemies among the workers. Well, if you think of anything unusual, why, please call us. Exactly. Get over to probate. See what you can find out about the Webley estate. What do you mean he won't cooperate? What do I have to do, come down there myself? Wait a minute, wait a minute. You mean to tell me that two goons drag this guy out of a restaurant, haul him out into a parking lot, set fire to his pants, and he won't f press charges? Oh, family quarrel, I see. Sure, sure, sure. Well, don't let him go. I don't care. Dance that lawyer around for an hour until I come down and talk to him. Okay. Hiya. What was that all about? Uh, anyway, Mac, mm. I came down to see if you'd like to take me to lunch. I know this charming little Slavic restaurant that's run by a man named Mr. Borovich. How did you know? Anyway, I thought we could get a delicious lunch and then maybe sit and talk to him for a little while. About Ilya Astrov. Well, yes. Well, no. Because I'm going to do it, not you. But, Mac... Don't you... butt me. And you know I'm having lunch with the mayor. Oh, that's right. I completely forgot. <laughs> so you thought you'd just mosey down here and see if I'd spoken to Borovich yet. You know I never meddle. Well, what do you call it? Contributing. <laughs> Sally, love of my life, please stay out of this one. It's too dangerous, too difficult. And I don't want to have to worry about you. Mac, Mr. Borovich and Elia are very, very close. Besides, you know how those middle European men can be. Very charming and evasive. They're not going to tell you a thing. Whereas you. <laughs> Whereas I, with my infinite charm and innocent demeanor, could wring information out of a store window dummy. Then go window shopping on your lunch hour and stay away from Borovich. Mac! Sally! You know, you can be very forceful when you want to be. Must be the power of the office. Flattery will get you nowhere. I'm not flattering you. I'm extremely impressed. Stop. I'm getting a swelled head. I'll see you at home. Right. Bye. Bye. Do give my best to the mayor. I will. And Sally? Yes? No Borovich. Mac? Yeah? I love you. I'm a friend of Ilya Astrov, and he told me that you're the very best friend that he has in this country. He's like a son, but he has much to learn. The stories in the news sadden me. You don't think that Ilya is capable of murder? I think there is a breaking point in every man that should not be tested. Would you have him call me? I don't know where he is. Mr. Borovich, he's in trouble. I'm sure he's going to contact you. He hasn't contacted me. If he does, will you tell him to call my husband and give himself up? Please? I could try to persuade him. But Ilya is a man who makes his own decisions. Tell him that my husband is a fair man, that he won't be railroaded or anything like that. I'm sure your husband is just. A woman always reflects the character of the man she lives with. That works both ways, you know. Ah, yes. These are modern times. In my house, a woman is not allowed to smoke. Good for you. It's a nasty habit. <laughs> Mrs. McMillan, I am like a godfather to the Slavic people in the city. I'll pass your words along. Thank you. No, no. no. Thank you. to stop meeting like this. Let me see your badge. What badge? 
Looking for a fugitive from justice requires a badge, Mrs. Aha, uh -huh. we're down to that, are we? What are you doing here anyway, man? Looking for a fugitive. Sally, I told you I wanted to talk to Mr. Borovich. I asked you not to. Since you were supposed to be having lunch with the mayor, I thought you might get tied up and you'd appreciate the help. Well, I, I did have lunch with the mayor. How is he anyway? Oh, fine. He's... What did Borovich say? He says he doesn't know where he really is. You're sure? Yes, Mr. Borovich wouldn't lie to me, Mac. Oh, I see. Whatever Mr. Borovich tells you, that's it. Intuition, Mac. It's the same intuition that tells you that Astroff is not the killer, huh? He's a killer, all right. On the tennis courts. Only. Watch out. Tennis, Charlie. This is a beautiful racket, sir. Is it new? Sally gave it to me. She thinks I ought to get out more. Well, she's got a very good point, sir. A healthy body is a happy body. A healthy body is a happy body. Got it. Any leads on Astra? Not really, sir. I had breakfast with Pinson. He's an investigator over at probate. What do you have? One egg, three minutes. Two slices of bacon, crisp. What information did he have? Oh, well, according to him, the Webley Corporation was up to its eyebrows in debt to the banks. Oh? And by the time the government takes its cut out of the estate, there's not going to be anything left. Commissioner, will you tell me how a man with a million dollars goes broke? He spends a million and a half. Well, I guess that's what he did. Pinson says that the corporation was always one loan ahead of bankruptcy. Anything illegal? No, sir. Or nothing that's been established. But the money that was borrowed from the banks didn't always go back into the businesses. A lot of it ended up with the Webley Charity Foundation. Tax exemption? Yes, sir. All right, I want you to check that foundation out. Find out where the money went, who authorized what, and anything else you can find. Right away, sir. Uh, uh, Charlie. Uh. Oh. Oh, that sounds lovely, dear. Yeah, but I'll have to check my calendar. Hold on for a moment, all right? Just a minute. Oh, it's great. Yes, dinner tonight will be lovely. Where should we meet? At the restaurant. All right, fine. See you later. Bye-bye. Mildred, was that for me? Nope, it was for me. Sarah Jukes wants to take me to dinner tonight. Oh. Told her I'd have to check with you first, though. Oh, that's fine with me. I didn't know what we were going to serve for dinner tonight anyway. I just thought I'd get Mac to take me out. Oh, good, because actually I did accept. But I would cancel if you wanted me to. No, that's fine. Where's she going to take you? I don't know, some place I never heard of. Uh, Le Petomen? Le Petomen? Mildred, that's the most exclusive French restaurant in all of San Francisco. You have to wait days to get reservations there. Well, Sarah's very well connected. You can say that again. Oh, I guess I'll have to dress up. I wonder what I should wear. Why don't you wear that cute little dress with the beige stripes? No, Sarah says stripes makes me look chunky. I think I'll stick with the polka dots, you know? Mildred, I don't want to rain on your parade, but did it ever occur to you that Sarah might be buttering you up just to pump you about Mac's investigation? Sarah is too old bred for that. I just don't want you to be disappointed. No, I'll tell you why I think Sarah likes me, because I'm all the things she's not. Good sense of humor? Refreshingly candid. Unaffected? Honest. Oh, yeah, that too. Oh, I tell you, Mrs. McMillan, I'm really kind of just too marvelous for words. And so modest. Aha, uh -huh. most of all, that. Well, I hate to stop this conversation, but I have to go bathe in unguents and oils. Unguents and oils? I'm going to shower, kitty. Why do you... Look, whatever the problems are, we'll confront them. Yes. Yes, of course. I want no unnecessary delays. Just get this through probate as fast as possible. I don't want to be tied up with this thing forever. Right. That's right. Goodbye. 
It's not only unfair, Walter. It's not possible. $500 a week is a lot of money. You get to keep all your diamonds and furs. Maybe for one or two days, but one week. That's all he left. I just can't believe it. Six of the best years in a girl's life I gave to that. He reaches out to me even from the grave. It's downright rude. Did you really think that Ewing was going to leave everything he worked for to a Vegas chorus girl and a tennis pro? Everything my father controlled was like, like a toy to him. He left all his toys to his son. Simple as that. You know, Walter, your father used to think that I was the most glistening toy of all. Third District, Sergeant Halliday. Halliday. This is Comparini. Yeah, Paul, what is it? Hey, Camperini, you still there? We're on our way. Camperini! Astrof. Get me Sergeant Henry. shot once in the back, sir, but he lived long enough to phone the police. You're sure his final word was Astroff? Sergeant Halliday has a tape of all incoming calls at his desk, sir. Oh, that phone sure. will be dusted for prints. Yeah. There's one thing that doesn't make sense. Hmm. What was Ilya Astroff doing here? Ming Dynasty vases. That is very good, sir. But how would he know that this particular antique dealer was also a fence? Well, Comparini hung out with a jet set, didn't he? They're the only ones who can afford these things. Well, they match what's in this picture, sir. Mm -hmm. Astroff's got running money now. Check with immigration, his visa status, any new applications. Probably got enough money now to get himself a new passport and a new appearance to match. Ewing had good taste. What do you do with them? Well, you... You look at them. Well, they don't do anything for me. Think how much money they cost. Yeah. Yes, that helps. Hi. Hi. Mm, how was your day? Horrible. Mine too. My backhand has completely disappeared. I don't know why I even go out in the courts. It's so embarrassing. Then after that disaster, I had lunch with Gertrude Inglebach. You know her. She works with the charity. She suggested that we go over and see the Giacometti exhibit. We had to stand in line for so... How did you say your day was? Oh, horrible. You really mean that, don't you? Would I ever lie to you? Well, what happened? An antique dealer was murdered today in North Beach. Paul Camperini. Guess what his last word was? Astro. Ilya? You know those missing faces from Ewing's library? They were in Camperini's safe. Oh, no. Well, it looks like Ilya has murdered two people, doesn't it? Anything's still possible. It is? Maybe you'd be interested in what I found out today. Have you been snooping around again? Just a little bit. Elia's manager has a policy with Lloyd's of London that pays him a half a million dollars if Elia, through death or injury, can't play tennis. How'd you find that out? Gertrude Engelback, whose husband wrote up the policy. That's a nifty-looking dress, Mildred. Where are you going? Out to dinner with Sarah Jukes. 
Oh, yes, the highest paid housekeeper in the Bay Area. She makes enough money to take her friends to very classy restaurants. What about our dinner? Oh, that's taken care of. I'm cooking dinner tonight. Yes, another one of her gourmet delights. Enjoy. The last uh, gourmet delight was a nut casserole dipped in goat butter. Yes, and you know how much you like that one? You're going to like the one I've got cooking even more. What is it? Well, you've never had it before. A uh, rattlesnake. Rattlesnake Bernays. I have an idea. Why don't you and Mildred have rattlesnake Bernays for lunch tomorrow, and meanwhile, why don't we go out for dinner tonight? I think so. Only take me a minute to get dressed. Rattlesnake Bernays? Good night, Commissioner. How do you do, Miss Jones? Hello. Your table is ready. Would you follow me, please? Yes, thank you very much. This way, please. Come along, Mildred. with the vichyssoise, uh -huh. uh, then the filet, English cut, medium rare, and the asparagus with just a pinch of lemon. Pinch of lemon. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, Mildred, there's much concerning life and relationships with employers that you have to relearn. Where do I begin? Uh, with your hair. My hair. What's that got to do with working for the Macmillans? We must find a new image for you. One that creates more, uh, detachment. Well, I'm game to try anything once. Tell me, Mildred, what are your duties with the Macmillans? Oh, uh, just about everything. I'm sort of jack of all trades in the household. Really? Your obligations should be clearly defined. Well, what's to define about a dust rag and a grocery list? Oh, I never pick up a dust cloth. No kidding. How do you manage that? I have a staff of four. Oh, yeah, well, uh, things are a little different at the Bink Millens. Uh, we keep it pretty informal. Yes, I'm beginning to realize that. Oh, you're too familiar with them, Mildred. Don't you see? Once you allow that to happen, it's extremely difficult to get a raise. Instead, they give you, uh, affection. Oh, well, to tell you the truth, Sarah, I'll settle for affection any old day. Well, as long as you have such a familiar relationship with them, you might want to pass on a bit of information. Such as? That if your employer does not cease hounding my employer, then my employer is going to pillory your employer in his various media. Wow. The commissioner's never been pilloried there before. Oh, this is no time for levity, Mildred. Well, in that case, you can pass this along. My employer is not afraid of your employer, and he intends to do everything he has to do in order to solve this case, no matter who's involved. How unprofessional of you. Yeah, well, different strokes for different folks, Sarah. How is the vichyssoise? A little heavy on the vichy or the soise, but I haven't figured it out yet. If you discharge that many men, senor, there will not be no hands. It'll work out, Ronaldo. We're getting out of the beef business and the game preserve business. It's just too expensive to operate. 
Comprendes? I will give the man their notice. Fine. What's Walter so hot under the collar about? He wants his Ming vases back. Hmm. What about immigration? Well, there's no record of Astroff having used his Yugoslavian passport to leave the country. I'd say the odds are he's still around. Well, I didn't say he's still in the city. Oh, we keep checking planes, buses, trains, car rentals, etc. There's right. no trace. Put a tail on Hoffenstein, Mrs. Webley, and Walter. And Borovich. If you don't mind, sir, I'll take Mrs. Webley myself. Your father always wanted to know how the men were doing personally. I am more concerned with operating this place efficiently. Comprendes? That'll be all, Martinez. Senor? Well, Walter? I came out here personally to ask your permission. Did you bring to... the vases? Uh, no, there's still evidence in a murder case. You'll get them soon enough. What about Mr. Ostroff? Uh, nothing. Did you, uh, did you check the North Beach area? Oh, uh, we sure did. He's already killed two people and you can't find him. That doesn't speak very well for the police, does it, Commissioner? I'm not so sure he murdered the antique dealer. You've got the dying man's voice on a tape implicating Ostrov, and you're not sure? If the dying man made a phone call to the police and then died, he'd leave prints. There were no fingerprints on the telephone. Maybe the killer came back and wiped the prints off. You mean Ilya? I mean the killer, Walter. Sure. The murderer kills the antique dealer and then leaves the room. The antique dealer drags himself to the telephone, makes the phone call, dies. Then the killer comes back and wipes the prints off the telephone. Doesn't sound right, does it? Not even close. Well, I'm off to town. You have a nice day. Is everything all right, Walter? Goodbye, Rachel. Isn't he adorable? There's a simple but embarrassing explanation, Commissioner. The police arrive, and under the pressure of the moment, they use the antique dealer's phone to call the lab men. Then the unthinking police officer realizes he goofed, wipes his fingerprints and everything else off the phone. That's possible. I don't understand. You're the commissioner of police, and you're just about the only one in this town who does not believe that Astroff killed my father. I'm just not as sure as everyone else. Your father was a powerful man. There's an awful lot of people who would like to see him dead. So you're the reason that the uh, state is being held up in probate? No, the reason is the law. A corporation just can't borrow money from the banks to transfer it to charity foundations. Banks loan money to businesses, not charities. So what do you intend to do? Drag the Webley name through the courts to keep the wolves off your back? I'm simply trying to find the murderer of your father. And what are you wasting your time out here for? Because I came out here personally to ask your permission to go through the Webley books. No. No, not a chance. We'll get a court order. You allow a man known to millions of television viewers to slip through your fingers, so now you're on a fishing expedition to hide your incompetence? Humiliating, isn't it? Oh, and by the way, isn't Sally a friend of Astroff's? She is. She's also a friend of yours. Maybe you're not looking hard enough. You don't really believe that. It can be made to look that way. The Webley media has been kind to you up until now. Commissioner. Cannot kindness. Come in, Enright, wherever you are. Yes, Commissioner. I'm on a stakeout at the Webley residence here in the city. I take it the beautiful widow's inside. That she is, sir. Good. What about the others? Well, they're under surveillance, too. All right, I'll be at home. And add Walter to your list. Will do. Commissioner, have a very pleasant evening. Hi, Sergeant. Evening, ma'am. Isn't this a coincidence, running into you like this? Well, I was just going to uh, stop and have a bite to eat. Oh. Sergeant, there isn't a restaurant within 10 blocks of you. Oh, well, I've got a little bit of dinner in here. Uh, 
It looks awful. Not really. Chocolate milk, sardine sandwich. You know, you're just not sneaky enough to make a good cop. Am I a suspect or something? Well, ma'am, to tell you the truth, I have orders to keep my eye on you. Oh, is that going to be a little difficult with you out here and me in there? Well, I mean, uh, an eye on the apartment. Do you want to kill two birds with one stone? Ma'am? Keep an eye on me and the apartment. Ma'am? You are going to be out here watching the apartment all night, aren't you? Yes, ma'am. I'm afraid so. Well, then why did you come inside? I'm not going out. Well, that's highly irregular. But it's just awful if you have to stay out here all night. Well, I have to agree with you on that. Well, then don't be silly. Come on in. Come on. Sergeant. Thank you. Uh-oh. I'm afraid I can't eat those pastries. I'll blow it up right here on the spot. Oh, but you can't be on a diet all the time. Well, I am, though. You know, it's really bad. I mean, if I so much as walk by a bakery, I gain weight. Hmm. What a shame. Oh, it's so muggy. I think I'll go take a shower. Go ahead, watch television if you like. Oh, uh, can I use your telephone? Sure. Uh, this is Sergeant Enright. I can be reached at 555-8787. Uh, Right, thank you. Hello, Mildred. Oh, hi, Commissioner. Want a snack? What is it? Leftover rattlesnake Bernays. With or without the venom? Mm-hmm. <laughs> It tastes suspiciously like tuna fish to me. Gee, I wouldn't know. You'll have to take that up with the missus. Where is she? She wants you to pick her up at the tennis club. She's hanging around there waiting for a game. That's all I need, to be married to a tennis club. Right. Enjoy the uh, snake, Mildred, but be careful of the fans. Sweet. With the Secretary of State due back in Washington on Tuesday. Locally, police continue their search for professional tennis player Ilya Astrov, wanted in connection with the murders of Ewing Webley and antique dealer Paul Camperini. We have received word, although it's unconfirmed at this time, that Police Commissioner Stuart McMillan is continuing to look for other suspects. This despite the substantial evidence pointing at Astrov. We'll have all the sports for you after this message.
Hello, this is Commissioner McMillan. I'd like to talk to Sergeant Enright. Can you put me through on this line, please? Yes, I'll wait. In hockey, the Wings took the Blades 3-1. The Hawks edged the Rangers 4-3, and the Canadians blitz L.A. 8-0. In NBA action, the Lakers edged the Warriors 1-17. That's the Lakers' fourth in a row, and it puts them back into a tie for first place. And for the Warriors, they haven't beaten the Lakers now their last five tries. That goes back to the last month of last season. This is Webley telephone. In action, Portland walloped the Bucks 123-99. New York devastated Boston 106-92. Cincinnati squeaked by 105-104 in overtime. And Chicago run in Philadelphia 105-104. Hello, Sergeant Enright here. How is everything, Charlie? Sir? You keeping a close watch on Rachel? Uh, uh, well, sir, I... Uh... Something wrong, Charlie? I... lost her, sir. Something's wrong, Charlie. I would say so. Yes, sir. She said that she was going to go take a shower, and then... You can relax. Rachel's here at the tennis club playing with Sally. Why would she go and pull a stunt like that? Fun and games. Maybe you better watch Walter instead. At least with him, you won't fall for that old shower routine. Yes, sir. Now you know why I never went in for vice work. Now I know. Thank you. I'll be right back. Okay. Hi, Mac. <clears throat> that bad, huh? Hello, Commissioner. Rachel. Do you know that she beat me? Do you believe it? Where's she going? I don't know. She's gonna take the fourth phone call that she's had with one set. Very popular widow. I thought I could beat her. I almost did beat her. You know, there's a lot more to Rachel than meets the eye. I think Enright might agree with that statement. Did she beat him, too? <laughs> More or less. You know, at first she comes on with that sort of dumb image, but after a while you find out that she's a very self-sufficient girl underneath. Well, goodbye, you two. Don't you want to play another set? Oh, I can't. I've just been invited to go to a party. I think it's best I start going out again. But I'll be home all next week. Why don't you give me a call? We'll play. OK. Bye, Commissioner. Bye, Rachel. Well, there's a new little Italian place just open across the street. You want to give it a try? It certainly beats your rattlesnake offer, but uh, I think I'll see you at home. Do you mind? Where are you going? Well, I think she's just as smart as you think she is.
This is Commissioner McMillan. Get me Sergeant Enright. Mac, you're gonna have to be more careful. Whoever tried to kill you could try again, you know. I must be getting close. To who? Whom? Walter? Rachel? You're forgetting Ilya Astrov. Somebody else could have done it, you know. Uh, yeah, like who? Uh, who? You were right the first time. Ted Hoffenstein, you're forgetting him. You'll blame anyone but Astrov. Well, it is true that my backhand has been deteriorating since he left. You think Hoffenstein framed Astrov? Could be. I don't. His policy doesn't pay off on any criminal acts by Astrov. Only death or injury. Well, that's good, because I'm having lunch with Ted tomorrow at the tennis club in town. What does he want to have lunch with you for? He just called a little while ago to make the date. If nothing else, maybe he could recommend a new tennis instructor. Commissioner McMillan? Sergeant? Mrs. Webley in? Uh, yes, she is. Would you like to come in? Yep. I'm afraid we are a bit disorganized today. The estate auditors just seem to be everywhere. Mrs. Webley sleep here last night? Uh, yes, she did. She's having her breakfast out on the veranda. Would you tell her I'd like to see her, please? Certainly, sir. Commissioner? Hmm? Will you look at these paintings? about him. I may be ill. Why? Some of these are quite beautiful. But look at the prices on these. Well, great art's become big business, Charlie. You're telling me. Well, now, take this picture, sir. Picasso. What do you think of it? Well, it's... beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Well, to this beholder, this woman here, uh... It is a woman, isn't it? Well, I, I, uh... Yes, I, I think so. Well, this woman looks like a hard-boiled Easter egg. Well, at, uh, $150,000 appraised value, I'd like to have it in my Easter basket. Well, confidentially, sir, I wouldn't give you a nickel for it. Is that a firm offer to the estate? Oh, uh, excuse me. No, I was, uh, just offering a personal opinion. You strike me, young man, as someone whose tastes run more to those clowns with the weepy eyes. Well, I may not know much about art. But he knows what he likes. Commissioner? Yes. Mrs. Webley will see you out on the veranda. Thank you. Oh, uh, sir? Hmm? Uh, well, I'm a little embarrassed about last night, sir. So... Oh, uh, you want to wait here? If you don't mind. Yeah. Good morning. Hello, Rachel. Would you care for some coffee? What kind of games do you have in store for us today? Who, me? Yeah, you. Tell that sergeant that I thought it was the fun thing to do at the time. Where did you go last night? To a party. Where? A yacht. Who's yacht? Some rich young thing. Adrian Perry's his name. You sure you don't want some coffee? Positive. Where's Astroff? He hasn't contacted me. Honest, you really are mad, aren't you? You damn right I am. Somebody tried to run me off a cliff. I don't like that. It clutters up my day. So tell us what you know and save yourself a lot of grief. All I know is that my husband's dead and a very attractive young acquaintance is missing. Mm -hmm. 
And what do you make of all that? Did the very attractive acquaintance do in your husband, as we're all led to believe? I don't think so. At least I didn't think so until that antique dealer was shot. If it was Astroff, why would he try to run me off a cliff? Maybe it was an accident. <laughs> yeah, accident. Listen, when you see that sergeant, you tell him I think he's cute in a kinky sort of way. Good afternoon, Commissioner. You know you are cute in a kinky sort of way. Thank you, sir. Anything yet on Astroff? Uh, no, sir, but some very interesting facts on Walter Webley. Hmm? Let me see if I can get this straight now. OK. Now, for the past three months, each time the bank loans were transferred to the Tax Exempt Foundation, Young Webley flew into Venezuela, and he deposited the money there. How much involved? Ten million. Ten million? Get a court order. I want to see those books. Well, you've really gone into a lot of trouble. You don't really think I killed my father, do you? It's $10 million missing, Walter. No, not missing, Commissioner. I just invested. South America, the interest rates are higher there. Your idea, your father's? My father's. It's all documented. He wanted as many funds as possible funneled through the foundation. I, I see. So that if the Webley companies go under, the money from the Webley Foundation can't be touched. Well, that's the way it goes on the corporate battlefields. There's nothing illegal about it. Unless a conspiracy to defraud the bank can be proved. Well, you'll have to admit that's not likely since the conspiracy, if it did exist, did so solely in the mind of my father. And he's dead. Oh, uh, what is the money invested in? Condominiums in Caracas. Mm. In Caracas. How nice. See you, Walter. Sergeant. Enright, what do you make of it? Well, sir, if he knew his father's conglomerate was collapsing, and he wanted to grab some money off of a sinking ship, but his father found out about it, that certainly is a motive, sir. That would mean he'd have to stash the money in South America instead of investing it. I'll see what I can find out. I'll call somebody in Caracas. Commissioner, what if it's invested properly, like Walter says? That would mean Astroff remains number one on our list. <laughs> Macmillan, I got a special delivery letter from Ilya yesterday. Where is he? I believe he's still in the city. He heard that you were looking for him, and he asked me to talk to you. Teddy should give himself up. I think he may have that in mind, actually. He wants to see your husband tonight at Borovich's restaurant. He wants to see Mac? Mm -hmm. At midnight, he will see that the front door is left unlocked. I suppose he's afraid that the police themselves might just start shooting. Mrs. McMillan, maybe... Ted. 
You don't think that Elia killed Ewing, do you? I have tried for years to persuade tennis fans that Elia's outbursts are part of the promotion. But they are, I'm afraid, the real thing. And when a grown man like that has tantrums, well, somebody can get killed. Hi, Mac. Hi. Walter gets more charming every day. What does it say? Uh, Mildred? Yes. It's not Mildred. Well, it's not Matahari, if that's what you're thinking. No, I, I wasn't thinking that. Don't you like it, Mac? Well, I, I, I can't see your face. That's OK. I can't see yours either. Listen to this. Does the commissioner seek sensational mileage out of the Webley name in his bid to become the next governor? Governor? I didn't know you wanted to be governor. You didn't, so. Why, Mac, I thought you told Sergeant Enright everything. Well, not everything, Sally. It isn't that I want to be governor. It's just that Sally wants to be first lady. Let me <laughs> see the signed Walter Webley. I'm going to speak to Sarah Jukes about this. Can I have this? With pleasure. Was that really Mildred? I don't know. It sounded like her. Charlie, you look like you have tired blood. Is that Diet or Rachel? Rachel, she moves around an awful lot, sir. In fact, I think she's preparing to meet with Astroff. What makes you think that? She picked up a renewed passport today. Where is she now? Back at her apartment. Anyone on stakeout? Yeah, I got a relief man till morning. I can sure use the sleep. Yeah, well, you better get as much as you can. Thanks for the coffee. You're welcome, Sergeant. Good night. I have a hunch Rachel's going to be much more active. You know, Commissioner, this whole case is beginning to get very strange. It's been strange from the beginning. Are you really going to run for governor? Well, Charlie, if the people insist, I... I have no choice. <laughs> now for a nice, quiet evening at home. Where shall we start? I think you might want to start by reading this. What took you so long? Well, I wanted to wait for Sergeant Enright to leave. You're not thinking of going there without me. Oh, no. I've been adequately warned. Are you sure this is on the up and up? Well, if it isn't, why would Ilya want to see you?
Get me Sergeant Anne Wright. Do you know how much it hurts to be hit over the head with whatever it was I was hit over the head with? It's the most unredeeming experience of all time. It's all my fault. Your fault? Well, I was wrong about Elia. We should have called the police. I am the police. Commissioner, it's not the same thing. Hi, Sergeant. Commissioner? Mm -hmm. How you feeling? My head hurts. His head hurts. I'm also getting an echo. Well, at least you got your man. My man? His man? There it is again. Astroff, sir. What are you talking about? Well, we also found his body in the restaurant. You shot him. No, I didn't. Well, I'm afraid you did, sir. The bullet was fired from your gun at a very close range. I didn't shoot anybody. Well, I had a hard time believing it, sir, but it was your bullet in Elia's body, and there were no other wounds. All right. Somebody hit me over the head, took my gun, and shot him. Who, Mac? I don't know. You know, sir, downtown, everybody thinks this is all over. They've taken surveillance off of everybody. So I'd better gear it up again. No, the case is officially closed. Leave it that way. What about unofficially, sir? Do you think you could keep an eye on Rachel? What? Yes, I can. I've learned my lesson, sir. Believe me, she won't suspect a thing. You don't think that Rachel killed Ewing, do you, Mac? No, she couldn't have. At least not alone. But she might lead us to whoever did it. Who took that call from Caparini? Halliday, down at the North Beach District. See if we can get him over here. Third District, Sergeant Halliday. Halliday, this is Comparini. Yeah, Paul, what is it? My place, he hit me. The tennis guy. Hey, Camperini, you still there? We're on our way. Camperini! Astroff. Are you sure that voice was Camperini's? Well, sir, when I was on the street patrol, I got to know him pretty well. I thought I recognized his voice when I answered the call, but, uh, you know, it's so whispery and so gasping. No, sir, I cannot state positively, Commissioner. What time did the call come in? 3.30 p.m. on the 7th. If Camperini were already dead when he supposedly telephoned you, that could explain why there were no fingerprints on the telephone. Mac, I'm getting confused. Well, what if somebody killed Camperini, then telephoned the police pretending it was Camperini? Ah, someone who wanted you to think that Elia was the killer. Right, and who wanted us to think that Elia was still on the run. But what if Elia were already dead? Mac, he was at Borovich's last night. His body was. Mac, if Elia had been dead that long, the coroner would have spotted it last night. Not if it were carefully preserved. Um, there'd still be two wounds, the original and the one from your gun. Not if the killer took my gun and shot him in exactly the same place. Oh. Back to the question of preserving the body. How often does Mildred go to the market? I don't know, once a week, once every two weeks, why? And what does she do with the meat that she doesn't cook right away? Well, she puts it in the fr Ewing's freezer. Thank you, Halliday, you've been of great help. <laughs> Thank you, sir. We're shutting it down next week, as soon as the last of the beef is shipped. Be sure and get as many blood samples as possible. We're doing that now, sir.
welcome to your new hairdo. Oh, I'm too familiar to be distant. Oh. Uh, is this steak or is it a uh, kangaroo or something? Well, if it's kangaroo, I'm swearing out a warrant against the butcher. I'll get it. You eat the kangaroo. McMillan residence. She used to just say hello. I think that's the lingering influence of Sarah Jude. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's the lab. I'll tell them to call I'll back, take it. okay? I'll no, 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 I'll take it. Yeah. Oh, only one, huh? All right. Thank you. What was that? They found human blood in the meat freezer. Was it Ilya's? Uh, it's the same type. Should never have gotten mixed up with Rachel at all. That's what uh, Sarah's been saying from the beginning. All this time he was supposedly on the run, he was hanging like a side of beef in the meat freezer. Why'd they stash him away in there? To preserve the body. Ugh. Then bringing it out at the proper time so the police could find their fugitive. Since you were getting close, you were the ideal candidate to be set up to shoot Ilya. Correct. Whoever did it naturally assumed I would close the case. Then the same person that killed Ewing also killed Ilya. Probably. Mac, do you think that Rachel and Walter... I'm expecting a long-distance phone call. Yeah, hello. So much for Sarah Jukes. Who do we know in Caracas? That's the phone call. I'll take it. Hello? Yes. Yes, this is he. No, operator, I want to talk to the president of the Venezuela National Bank. Yes, I'll wait. Hello, senor presidente. Yes, did you find the information I wanted? Oh, you did? Then it is a joint bank account. That's what I thought. Yes, well, thank you. Um, muchas gracias. <laughs> yes, I should. Yes. Yes, I will, sir. Thank you. Goodbye. You should what? Uh, learn to speak Spanish. A $10 million job. A $10 million joint bank account registered to the Silverio Gonzalez Land Development Company, payable to Mr. and or Mrs. Silverio Gonzalez. Silverio Gonzalez? That's the worker that went back to South America, isn't it? The worker who allegedly went back to South America. Car 3-6. Three, 3-6, six. Three, six, and right here. Sergeant, I have the commissioner on the line. I'm patching him through. Go ahead. Charlie? Yes, sir. Where are you? Well, I'm right outside the mansion, sir. Rachel Webley drove onto the grounds about 40 minutes ago. I'm coming right now, Sergeant. Call me on the car phone if she leaves. Yes, sir. 10-4. <laughs> What's funny? I always feel silly, sir, when I say 10-4. <laughs> How about 5-2? Goodbye, sir. 5-2. Are you here? What is it? Huh? What is it? It's all coming together. You're kidding. Tell me. I can't. Gotta run. You're gonna run? Leave me in the dark? Mm hmm Mac, take me in the car. Explain it to me on the way. No chance. Mac! And O. Commissioner? And I'm not taking you either. I was just gonna say, when you're right, you're right. Why, thank you, Mildred. And you're a wise, rational, mature woman. Tell you later. You're a wise, rational, mature woman. You're a wise, rational, mature fink. Evening, Clifford. Mrs. Good Webley evening. in? 
Uh, no, sir. You just missed her. Uh, her car is gone. Oh. Oh, well, well, thank you. You're quite welcome. Good evening. Good evening. The butler says she's left. Impossible. I would have seen her go. Only if she used the front gates. There's a thousand acres here. She could have used the service road. Let's go. Yes, sir, but what's it doing at the crypt? Well, let's find out. Afraid of that. Afraid it was open? No, that it would creak. It scares the hell out of me, if you must know, sir. Me too. Lions. I mean, he's supposed to be in there or whatever left of him. Commissioner, an airplane? Private air I'll drive. going up in their own airplane? No, but it's a law of murdering a person. Oh, I don't know what you're talking about. We just found Ewing's body. I know all about the money in Caracas, the investments in the Severio Gonzalez Development Corporation in both your names. Walter delivered it for you, and he didn't even know anything about it, did he? No. Put the gun away. Ewing used him the way he used everybody. Commissioner, I still don't understand about Mr. Webley's body in the crypt. He was alive the whole time. That is, until a few minutes ago. He persuaded Silverio Gonzalez to impersonate him, didn't he? Yes. He dressed Silverio up in his own clothes and sat him behind the desk in the library. And killed him. Then when Astroff came in, he saw him slumped over in the chair, dead, and he panicked. But he didn't get very far. Who shot him, Rachel? You? You wing. He planned the whole thing. He certainly underestimated you. 
You never would have guessed you'd have killed him. I could have had all of it. All ten million dollars. Plus my freedom. Pretty Rachel. Let's go. Well, who sold those vases to the antique dealer? Rachel. Then you and killed him and called the police. Boy, she had us on a wild goose chase the whole time, sir. It was his idea to make us think that she was in on it with Astroff. Well, who tried to run you off the cliff? Ewing. I didn't think Astroff killed the antique dealer. I told that to Rachel. She told it to Ewing, and he tried to kill me. Now, the only thing I don't understand, sir, is about the money. He invested it in the Silverio Gonzalez Development Company. Then, having assumed the identity of Gonzalez, he could pull out of Caracas any time he wanted, with the money and Rachel, and live happily ever after. Oh! Got that? No. Oh. But I'll sleep on it, sir. Go over it again in the morning. Okay. Thanks for the coffee, sir. You're welcome. Oh, uh, Commissioner? Hmm? Do you really think I'm cute? Rachel told me to tell you. Oh. Good night. Good night. Is anybody looking for a game? Not that I know of, Mrs. McMillan. Oh. Do you want to play? Me? <laughs> I can't stand the game. Dally! Mac, I didn't expect to see you. Why don't you change? We can play. I have a gift for you. Granted, he might not be a tall, green-eyed Romeo, but at least he can help you with your backhand. Oh. Bobby Riggs? Who'd you expect? Billie Jean King? Oh, you guys.